To thee we come, O Lord, our God. And now let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance for the next three nights, besides saying your evening prayers of the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be, to reflect upon for each of the three nights one of the three readings as prescribed by our church for this, the twelfth Sunday in the Ordinary. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he will not deny himself. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, who receives our prayer. Father, in this wondrous sacrament, 
you left us as a memorial of the passion and death of your son Jesus. May we, who so reverence his body and blood, persevere within ourselves the effects of his redemption. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. John, would you proclaim the word? A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for, you, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The verse one story, John. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who, who are in the bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted where there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over, over those who did not sin, after the pattern, tep, I'm sorry, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from 
the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What can I say to you in the darkness? Speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet do not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So no, do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fear no one. Words taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. They say that the last year of our Lord's ministry was a year of opposition. Just as in the case of Jeremiah, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, looked to entrap Jesus, to cause him to stumble, <clears throat> because they felt they were right in the way that they followed the law, and Jesus was wrong. Just as all the prophets that came to be God's spokesmen, the disciples of Jesus understood what fear was. You have to understand that this upright individual, as some would name Jesus or give the reference to, how bold Jesus was that after coming out of the wilderness, he went into his synagogue and he opened the place in the scrolls that was the place found in Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me. And the story goes that afterward he rolled up the scroll and he said, today you are hearing the fulfillment. There were those that doubted Jesus. Who is this? Is he not the son of Joseph? Joseph, a simple carpenter. Jesus was not enrolled in any rabbinical schools, but yet his mother and father, the protector, St. Joseph, I'm sure that they were righteous, and I'm sure that Jesus learned the Torah 
the law of Moses. It did not come to him instantly. He had to study as we hear the word of God, so Jesus needed to hear the word of God. And so, again in his last year, there were people that actually turned away and they walked away. Because some of the things that Jesus had to say, we read in scripture, it was very hard for people to understand. Jesus, in his ministry, as the transparency of God, said to the twelve, Fear no one. And he goes on to say that nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will be not known. What was Jesus' ministry? To proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand today as it was when Jesus first proclaimed it. But for us, it's a matter of acceptance that what Jesus said as a teacher, as a rabbi, was truthful in his day as it is today. So there are two main messages that are found in today's gospel. Jesus is saying, fear no one. He also on the Sermon of the Mount spoke about how important we are. And there are times in which he says, don't be afraid. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many things that we are fearful of. The least it should be that we are alone and that the Lord does not exist. It is according to our faith. I've been in hospital rooms anointing the sick and the eyes of some of those who were gathered in the room, they were fearful. And I would say that we are fearful, my brothers and sisters, if we, draw, if we grow away from the presence of the Lord. Think of what it must have been like when Jesus was arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin. Everyone left. Peter at least had the guts enough to go in the courtyard, but yet he denied the Lord three times. How sad at the crucifixion of our Lord that there were only a few women and only one of his disciples. They were fearful. Think after the crucifixion, after the Lord's body was laid in the tomb, what did the disciples do? They locked themselves away. They were fearful. My brothers and sisters, we need to affirm every single day that God is present in our lives and among others. We hear time and time again in the Old Testament about there is no need to fear, for the Lord God is a rock. A fortress. Was it not Jeremiah who spoke in today's lesson? Well, first of all, he talked about, oh my God, terror on every side. Even his friends would say, denounce him, denounce him. Looking to entrap him. But what was Jeremiah's answer? He said, O Lord of hosts, you who put and test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. 
Jeremiah placed his entire being in the Lord's presence. He said, sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. I have to believe that if we strive on a daily basis to be in the presence of the Lord, I believe that we are on the right path to understanding that we are so much more important than two sparrows. You know where the whole concept of the two sparrows came across? If you were offering a sin offering up unto the temple and you didn't have a lot of money, the simplest of all gifts were two sparrows. Others could expect, could sacrifice an animal worth more than two sparrows. But Jesus is saying the minimum of your sacrifice should be unto me. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Sunday, the 12th Sunday in the Ordinary, our Lord is speaking to us, and he's saying, fear no one. Put your faith and trust in me. Not everyone we hear the Lord speak. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever does the will of the Father. And was that not Jesus' ministry? To proclaim the kingdom and to glorify the Father? And the second theme for today We read that not one of them, a sparrow. Now remember, the simplest of all sacrifices were two sparrows. But Jesus say, says that not even one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. He says, even all the hairs of your head are counted. If we believe in our faith, in the divine presence of God and the Spirit of God who works through His Son, we then need on a daily basis to turn unto the Lord and fear no one. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being, but the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. Living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. On this day, let us offer God, our Heavenly Father, the following intentions. Let us pray. My dear brothers and sisters, for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, let us pray unto the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. May we pray this day for all our brothers and sisters who are sick and ill, that the healing rays of the divine physician may touch them. We pray to the Lord. We pray this day for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for peace in Ukraine and around our entire world, that the message of love, compassion, and forgiveness that Jesus spoke would be heard by all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, and we pray that Almighty God might protect them through his holy angels and return them safe and sound to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the Polish National Catholic Church, for, for a holy name of Jesus, for all members, benefactors, and sympathizers, that the holy name of Jesus might bless each and every single one of of us with his divine grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the <coughs> living God. Love 
that you have called each of us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life, and by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend this day to your Father's lead care. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Today we will offer the Eucharistic prayer number four that is found on page 88 of our Mass Service booklets. It is the canon of the Dutch Old Catholic Church. Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh. In him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life, he has revealed your love to us. He humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross and by rising restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed to undergo that suffering which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we celebrate. Your return in glory, we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in, the fullness of majesty. We here set forth the sign of our faith in him, who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness, upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Holy Spirit, come to us. Fill us with your gift and grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice, through which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May all who receive these gifts from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, 
and with all the saints whose memory we keep this day. With your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in prayer and praise, bless your church throughout the world, grant it unity and peace, renew the earth according to your promise, remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. And now let us turn to page 95 and continue with Holy Mass. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins. But on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace be unto you. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This morning, let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, Free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teachings and never let me depart from you. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Those who say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive him, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Blessed are you who will hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, may your grace strengthen us who have shared in the mysteries of the altar. Grant us the endurance to do your will and the resolve to receive what you have promised. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you, and may His loving graces bring you ever closer to Him. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Thank you. 